I'm a full-time studio artist and arts educator, which means that for the last, well, I actually did the math and I've actually been an exhibiting artist for almost 30 years now, which is kind of crazy to me. But um, I show my art both in public gallery spaces, like the Art Gallery Regina, um, and also in commercial gallery spaces where I sell my work. So I have quite a diverse um, practice. I'm painting a lot right now, but in the past I've done a lot of mixed media work, which is why I love this course, because it kind of lets me uh, share all the different ways of making that, uh, that I enjoy, actually. Um, and uh, then I also have had kind of a very interesting educational art practice where I've done a lot of innovative education online, hence me doing this online art course. And uh, the format for the course, uh, because it's a hands-on art class, is a little different than some of the online courses in that there's a lot of video-based assets on the course that I'm going to be talking about. Well, this is going to kind of be a kamikaze tour just to give you some tips on navigating through things. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk to you about expectations in terms of communication, mm -hmm. marking, due dates, and uh, materials. So I'm going to be done in 20 minutes, I promise. I try to make this short but sweet. You obviously have already looked through the course uh, first week to-do list because you're here. Did you have a chance to look at the course outline? I believe so. Yeah, it's just that document that you can find on the main page of the course. It's long, but it's a great resource to go to if there's a specific question you have about something to do with the course. What I think is most helpful is this chart. Mm -hmm. So the chart has absolutely everything you have to do for assignments for the course and the due date. So at any point as we get along into the course, you're sort of thinking, did I cover off everything? This is a great document to just quickly go back to and, um, and take a quick look and see where you're at. The other thing I always point out on the course outline is one of the goals of online courses is to be flexible. Um, but if you don't have any due dates, people tend to flounder. So what we have is kind of a combination. You have four major units of work, and they are all due within about a three-week period, as you'll note by the dates. Some of that's a little bit changed by time off in this particular term. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing under this assignments, you'll note that it says, if you contact me prior to the formal due date, I'll give you a no questions asked one week extension. Uh, I do that because the nature of this course, again, is I have a lot of people taking this course that are working, have kids, they're busy. Um, rather than panicking about a due date, contact me and I'll give you that one week extension. I don't like to give you an extension beyond that. I will if you have a doctor's note or some sort of formal documentation um, because I want to keep you on track. But this gives you that little bit of wiggle room. So keep that in mind when you're looking at due dates. Um, the other thing that you found probably in the week one was the documents that were the materials list and the final portfolio instructions. I'm going to talk about that with an assignment. So all the content for this course, all the major assignments are under the content modules assignments drop down menu. You'll notice the menus just drop up and down. I found it a little odd when I first started using it because it's not really like a web page. It's a different kind of space. Um, but the way that I've set things up, is um, most of the content is in the four units. There's this guide to digital imaging. That's a bonus document. Um, this course requires that you document your work and post it on the blog. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be helpful in case people needed some fine tuning of their skills to give you some resources. Um, on the course, anything that's a blue title is actually a link to some sort mm -hmm. of resource. So one of the things I like to point out in this digital imaging uh, resource is I have a free Photoshop program called GIMP that if you are interested in kind of doing some experimentation with doing some of your work digitally, this is amazing. Yeah, I, Sometimes, uh, you know, people don't want to commit to having that, that paying the cost for that. So GIMP's actually a pretty good alternative. Um, so if you need this resource, it's sitting there. If you don't, that's just fine. 
you probably know this, but whenever you're navigating the course, you can click on the title and go back to the main page of the course. Yep. The first unit is a good uh, sort of sample of how each of the units is set up, except that there's more stuff. I added some additional resources in the first unit that I thought would be helpful throughout the course. So that's why there's a few extra documents um, under the table contents of unit one. For example, this composition section, which is tips on how to organize your artworks. And uh, this is something that could be applied to almost any assignment in the course. So I thought I would give it to you in the first unit so you could apply it to the rest. If you look at one of the other units, let's look at telling stories. You'll notice it's just the straight up introduction, assignment three, assignment four. Mm -hmm. All the assignments are laid out, well here first I should mention, in every introduction, there's a short written assignment. I mean short. Um, you know, I have in here six to eight sentences, but if you can clearly articulate your ideas in a shorter paragraph, I'm very excited to see that. Um, these little reading response assignments are supposed to kind of make you think a bit about the larger context that you're doing the assignment in. So they're linked somehow to the content of the unit, but kind of a big picture idea. In the assignments, they're all laid out exactly the same way. They've got the due date. They've got sort of the approximate amount of time to complete. This is tough because different people have different skill sets, but mm -hmm. I wanted to give you a rough idea of how long most people find the uh, project. The objectives, which are good to look at because that's pretty much what I'm marking you on. And then the equipment and materials that you need for the particular assignment. This is where um, you can start to see how the videos play a role in the course. There's two kinds of videos for this course. This video in this exercise is a good example of a step-by-step how-to video. I always sort of say to people, if you click on the video and it's long, that means it's a step-by-step how-to. If it was me, I would have all my materials and stuff ready to go, and then I would work with the how-to as I'm watching it. It's a lot more interesting than watching the full 10-minute video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's another kind of video. So if we go to assignment four, um, and that's an explanatory video, and they're short. So when you click on them, you can always Plenty tell it's going to be that kind of video because it's under three minutes. And these are really worth watching because basically I tell you um, some really good hints and tips for doing the assignment. And I'll even show you examples of past students' work so you really have a clear understanding of what's going on. The way the assignments are also laid out is that there's always a written description of the assignment, then the video component as well. So if it was me, uh, first thing I would do is quickly skim read the whole assignment. Then I would go back and watch the explanatory video. And then I might want to have some materials or things on hand for watching the longer how-to videos. Uh, the other thing to pay attention to when you skim read the assignment is whether you have to post just the completed assignment or if you have to document things along the way. So for example, this assignment four, which is a major assignment, it's worth 15% of your mark, you have to have posted two preliminary drawings as well as the completed assignment. So it's smart to skim read everything and see what's required. Uh, so that you don't get completed and then look at what you have to submit and say, I was supposed to take five process shots along the way. Um, maybe this is just logical, but I like to point it out to people because it seems like people sometimes miss stuff. <laughs> uh, the other thing you'll note is you're, you're posting it to the blog. Uh, I know you've already been on the blog because I read your first post, which is great. Why a blog? Uh, if you were taking this course in person, a studio course like this, you would be bringing your work in and putting it up on the classroom wall for everybody to look at and critique. So this is kind of our virtual equivalent of that. That's why you're posting your work on the blog. Uh, you're also posting your written assignments there. If you post things early, I uh, may comment on them or give you some helpful suggestions. If you post it by the due date, you will just get your formal comment sheet which does not come to you publicly on the blog, I send it to you privately through the course email. 
So you've completed your assignment, you posted what's required to the blog. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to fill out a unit comment sheet that tells you what worked in the assignment and I'm going to give you some ideas of what you could have improved to improve your mark. Then I will put a mark in your gradebook, which if you've been online coursing before you'll know is up under your dashboard. And so you'll have these tentative grades in your gradebook. At the end of the course, I will revisit all of these marks with your final portfolio. So that's another thing to pay attention to in the assignment overviews. So if we go back and look at a different unit, it always says at the end of the assignment, not only what you have to post on the blog, but also that there's gonna be something that you have to do for the final portfolio. Again, there's the link to the final portfolio instructions through those each of the assignments, but you can also find it on the main page of the course in a couple of places. So this course requires that you submit your actual work at the end of the course. If you are living in Regina, you may wanna drop off your portfolio. And there's information on how to do that and the office hours. If that's difficult for you for some reason, you can also mail in your final portfolio. And this list tells you exactly what assignments are gonna to have to be in that hard copy portfolio and what assignments will be just submitted as part of a digital presentation. So it's good to kind of look this over and keep it in mind as you're working. And also don't uh, spill coffee on your <laughs> final assignments after you've posted them in the blog because you still have to submit them. So take care of them. But I have to see it in the final portfolio to give you your final mark. If you have improved your work, your mark may go up, which is excellent. That's what I hope for. If you haven't followed the parameters of the assignment, things like the size that you're supposed to be working at, your mark may go down. So that's how the assignment submission and marking works within this particular course. It, it'll actually be a folder because some of the okay. sizes of things are a full sheet size. And okay. you can either make that folder with just a couple of pieces of paper or a piece of cardboard. Um, they actually have really inexpensive folders for sale in some of the like staples and art stores. So you're gonna submit that. Uh, if you're mailing, I allow for rolling, but if you're delivering, I really encourage you not to roll your work. And then the digital portfolio, which is just basically a, a presentation, um, shouldn't be too much work because you'll have already have taken pictures of each of your assignments and posted it online. So really you're just pulling those pictures together. And it can either be emailed to me, you can send me a link, if you want to put it on something like Google Documents, or you can put it onto a USB drive and put it in with your portfolio. Does that make sense? Yep. Excellent. Um, let's look at the materials list quickly. So you can find the materials list under this resources tab on the main page is a good quick place to look for stuff. And it's long. <laughs> Not because there's a, uh, th there are quite a few different materials for this particular course, but this materials list is organized in different ways. Um, some people already have art supplies of their own, so I kind of made the list to reflect different people's needs. So there's a list by category that tells you the kinds of things that you have to have. Then there's a list by unit because some people buy their art supplies as they go in this particular course. So you'll note that for unit one, all you have to have is access to a camera. Um, what kind of camera? Um, I'm pretty easy going about that, as long as you use your tool well. So I've had people use their phone cameras for this course. You just have to realize that that type of camera might have some limitations that a fancier camera won't. Um, unit two is basically your drawing supplies. Unit three is your painting supplies, and unit four is your block printing supplies. My only cautionary tale is that the block printing supplies are sometimes the most difficult to find. So don't leave it till the day before uh, that work is due to go out and try to find block printing supplies, or you'll be in trouble like a few of my students last term. Um, I have listed some local suppliers where you can buy this stuff. Um, the campus has an art store, which is excellent, 
The only thing I would say is that uh, the acrylic paint that they're stocking is very expensive. It's the best quality, which is nice, but not really necessary for the two assignments that you do in this course. So if you don't want to spend as much on art supplies, you can shop around a little and find some better deals on certain things. Gail's Florist on Dudney has actually simple art sets of acrylic and some basic supplies at a very reasonable price. If you're a wholesale club member, you can go to Gail's Wholesale or you can try places like uh, the Walmart and the Dollar Store, to be perfectly honest, or you could order everything online. I have this online list here because some of our students are living in remote places and like to do their ordering online. And I found that Opus has been consistently the most reasonable Canadian supp online supplier. Um, and they do free shipping over a hundred bucks. So after a few years of giving people multiple places they could order online from, I finally just decided that I would give people a list from Opus because um, it uh, seems to be the most efficient and the most reasonably priced. And some of these things you might even have around your house. And uh, you know, this is a survey course. I call it the smorgasbord course. We're trying a lot of different things. Um, some of the stuff is very accessible. The block printing unit is probably the one where you need sort of specialty items that you won't have around your home. And the block printing kit that's listed on the online um, supplier here is a pretty good way to go. If you are in town, you might want to go to the University Art Store for those supplies. Let's see, I've covered assignments, I've covered due dates, I've covered materials, communication. Uh, I'm teaching this course from my home office and studio. So this is it. Uh, if you want to have a conversation with me, you can book an appointment on the Zoom site. If you want to have a video chat where you actually show me work, you're welcome to do so. Or you can use the course email. And um, I say in the course outline that I'll contact you within 48 hours, but to be perfectly honest, I check the course email generally several times a day, Monday to Friday, and I'm pretty prompt at answering questions that way. And that's also how you would book an appointment to meet with me in the Zoom meeting space. And again, I'm fairly flexible. Uh, what I ask people to do is suggest a couple of different times and then I'll get back to you and confirm what works. But I'm even willing to meet evenings uh, if it works out with my schedule. So does that uh, cover everything? I think I've covered my list. Uh, no questions? Uh, yeah, I just have a few. Um, the, the blogs, uh, so when I, when I post yes. on the blog, it's actually like <clears throat> shows like that each person when they post, it's like yeah. kind of separates my work, right? Okay, so how it works like, is uh, you can either view all users which is pretty helpful because sometimes it helps you see how other people are doing the assignment. But as it gets busy and you just want to check your own, you can actually just go and select your name. Oh, okay. And then only your work will come up, which especially mm -hmm. by the end of the course, you know, there's hundreds of posts on the blog. So sometimes it's nice yeah. to look at what you've posted. So that's what this visible individuals uh, thing does for you at the top. So I always leave it set for view all users because then I can see what people have been posting. But then when I mark, for example, I go and select the individual mm -hmm. and their work. And so the same for the forums. Uh, there's no organized way for the forum. Because I know um, in my other classes, they're like kind of, you post your own like response and then they kind of, people can comment like under. Yeah. So we have a wide open forum. Um, how you select this display will give you some idea of what's going on. Uh, if you put display replies in nested form, it shows you the first comment, which is directly uh, to responding to the question. And then it shows you how people are then responding to that person's post. If you want to, you can look Oh yeah, at that it. makes it easier. Yes. Yeah, so there's all these different ways to organize it, but I prefer display replies in nested form because that shows you what, yeah, yes. what's going on. Because otherwise you're like, well, what, what's that person saying? Like, you, you yeah, don't that's what I have. It's like, it's so random. Yeah, okay. And then if you're wondering if you have posted twice, 
you can actually search uh, the forum. Sorry, I just got to move something so I can see what I'm doing here. So the search function, you could put your name in. Mm -hmm. Oops, why isn't it not? Oh, because I wasn't clicked on it. <laughs> And it will tell you, okay, so if it goes to this, you can go down here and it's the name of the author. I'm spelling correctly, aren't I? Yeah. Okay, so now you can see that you've already contributed three times. You, you can, mm -hmm. so you can both look at the conversation, but also if you want to, you can sort of see where you're at. And you can continue to do that with, um, all of the forums and see what you've posted. The forums are uh, specific to a unit. That's why they only open for a specific amount of time. And one unit doesn't have a forum question. The way to know if you have a forum question for your unit is to look at the introduction. And this, by the end of the unit, always tells you if you have to have contributed to a discussion forum. Okay. So sometimes people panic when they hit the unit that doesn't, I, I gave you a break from the forum for one unit and people are like, where's the forum question? And I'll be like, you get a break. <laughs> uh, and you know, the forum uh, is designed to be short, short response. So some people get a little wordier than others, but I would encourage you to keep your answers short and on topic and straightforward. And then people will respond and read it. Mm -hmm. And it's usually just like your response and one comment, or it's like one response and two comments? One response and, sorry, one response to the question, one response to a classmate. So you're expected okay. to post okay. twice per forum. Yeah. Excellent. Any other questions? Mm, I believe that's it for now. If I have, I'll probably email you. Excellent. That's exactly what you should do. And if I get a question that I think is relevant to everybody in the course, there's this sneaky little thing on the main page called ask a question, find an answer, which I haven't actually mm -hmm. put anything in yet. Um, it's where I post, it's kind of my instructor's blog. So let's say I see that everybody's having trouble with sideways pictures in the blog. I'll post some resources there to help people to fix that issue. Or if somebody has a really good source of a certain material, um, I'll probably post that into this blog so people can share the knowledge. And have a great week. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.